The Great Purge in the Soviet Union had a major influence on Soviet society and the Red Army. The effects of the purge were significant in many ways, especially since the Red Army also underwent a major expansion. The purge and its consequences was one of the major contributing factors to the huge losses of the Red Army during Operation Barbarossa. Something I didn't state in my previous video on the Red Army losses during Operation Barbarossa because it was so obvious to me, in other words, I was routine blinded. Sorry for that major oversight, but let's get started. Now it is important to note that the Great Purge was not the first one in the Soviet Union, yet there was a significant change in quality and quantity to previous purges. What was new in 1936 to 1938 beyond the scale of purging was the fact that being purged did not only mean losing one's party membership and job, but frequently led to incarceration in the Gulag system, where many died, or for many, even execution. So let's take a look at the numbers that the military historian Alexander Hill took from contemporary Soviet summary statistics. In 1937, there was a total of 936,000 NKVD arrests. For 1938, this number was 638,000. Of these, 790 and 554 were convicted, and this led to 353 and 328,000 being shot. Another 429 and 205,000 were incarcerated. So in total, around 1.3 million were either shot or imprisoned. Note that these numbers are for the whole Soviet Union and was not limited to the Red Army. So let's take a look at what data we have on the Red Army itself. The purge in the upper ranks of the Red Army was quite extensive. In 1936, the Red Army had five marshals of the Soviet Union. Between 1937 and 1941, two of them were shot and one died in captivity. Now for the Kommandarm, the first and the second rank, which can be translated as Commander of the Army, there were 15 in 1936 and over the course of time, 19 were shot and one returned from captivity. Similar for the fleet, the flagman first and second rank, had four in 1936. Until 1941, five were shot. As you can see from these numbers, a high rank or promotion wasn't a particularly safeguard during that time. For the lower ranks, the losses were not so extensive, but still significant. For instance, the Combrig, which were the brigade commanders, we have the following numbers. In 1936, 474 served. From 1937 to 1941, 201 were shot, 15 died in captivity, one committed suicide, and 30 returned from captivity. Additionally, there were also less extensive measures. Quite many high-ranking personnel was forced out of the Red Army because they had ties to conspirators or foreign ties. Since now we have a basic understanding of the scale, let's look at the effects of this considerable removal of officers and personnel had on the Red Army. One major effect was the loss of experienced and qualified personnel. Probably one of the most famous victims was Tukashevsky who according to Shukov contributed to a large part in running the Ministry of Defense, although he wasn't minister himself. Additionally, those high ups in the Red Army that had a major influence in the purchase also promoted mostly along political lines, and all too often promoted unthreatening mediocrities to join them. Another problem was, even if talented people were promoted, they usually couldn't gather enough experience in their position, because promotions that usually took years in peacetime were now happening within months. During a war, such fast promotions are often less of a problem due to the intensity in learning opportunities, but in peacetime such promotion cycles are less than ideal. Of course, this loss of experience was intertwined with another major problem, the lack of trainers. This was even more problematic because the Red Army was undergoing a major increase in troop strength and equipment. In overall, the education for future commanders was cut short, from 3 or 4 years to 2 years. Additionally, the parts of the political education were also increased. Now to give you some numbers on the lack of trainers. The Frontse Military Academy in March 1938 had a teaching staff of 106, yet for 167 positions. Additionally, the number of planned positions was around 300. But it gets worse because this was before an intensive investigation of 61 members of the teaching staff was started, with 15 marked for removal and another 18 considered for removal. One way to cope with the lack of sufficient officers was to promote NCOs to officers. This was not an uncommon practice and also done in the Wehrmacht. Yet Germany had a significant advantage in 1937 to 1938 that it was not in the process of slaughtering a significant proportion of its existing commanders, 
a nor was promotability as dependent on political factors. Which brings us to the next part, the overall loss in morale. The removal of a large number of commanders also increased the fear. A small number of officers took the matter in their own heads and committed suicide. The fact that most of those who can be identified as killed themselves prior to arrest were political or legal personnel perhaps suggests that they had more idea of the fate awaiting them on arrest and the nature of the purchase than many others. It also seems that some commanders turned to alcohol due to the increased amount of tension and uncertainty. This of course increased the accident rate and since one common accusation during the purchase was that of fracking, cause and effect might have been the other way around. In case of aviation accidents, the number increased by 80% from 1936 to 1937 and the number of catastrophic accidents by 70%. A related example to this is in regard to the aircraft industry. Since economic planners set production numbers that mostly ignored the cost of switching a production line from one type to another, many factory managers dragged their heels when it came to making the necessary conversions. For them it was safer to produce older models and reach their quotas than to risk charges of fracking by pausing to convert their plants to produce more modern aircraft. Which brings us to the final problem, the overall loss of authority of the Red Army and its officers. Due to the numerous accusations of officers being foreign spies from England, France and other non-communist countries, the reputation of the military personnel suffered. This went so far that some believed the accusations and thought that the defeats of the Red Army during Operation Barbarossa were caused by the turnover of mobilization plans to the Germans. In overall, the authority of the commanders in the Red Army seems to have suffered due to fear, loss of reputation and also the lack of experience and age. After all, many were put in command position with a limited amount of experience and age, which is even a challenge in a relaxed environment in non-military organizations. Yet in an organization where practical experience is valued highly because it keeps you alive, this certainly undermined the authority of the commanding personnel. Now before we wrap this up, there's another aspect, namely the question if the purchase went out of control. Now it is certain that the purchase was initiated by Stalin and some of his associates. And one among the many reasons for the purge might have been the various rivalries among the officers. Something that was not uncommon, similar issues exist in other countries. One key target in those rivalries was Tukashevsky, who was both popular but also extremely disliked by some key figures, which probably led to him being portrayed as one of the key conspirators. Interestingly, Alexander Hill gives an example where the Commissar of Defense, Clement Voroshilov, had to intervene to save a close associate and it appears that it was a rather close call. He notes, such examples perhaps suggest that the purchase had gone far beyond what Voroshilov had proposed in spring of 1937. Because we also need to consider the following, once certain machineries are in motion, they are hard to stop. Interrogations, depending on how they are conducted, often lead to a list of names, especially if certain quotas are set, or the interrogator might face accusations himself, if certain results are not provided. Additionally, if one digs deep and long enough, you usually will find something. Not to mention that in some cases just contact to foreigners, even on official duties, could be a problem or just having the wrong nationality. The NKVD was central in the purge and the end of the Great Purge was surrounded by the execution of the head of the NKVD and his associates, although the term end is probably not really correct here. Nonetheless, the arrests, imprisonment and executions continued at a reduced tempo right up and during the first month of the Great Periodic War and notably so in the Red Army. Now to wrap this up, the loss of experience, trainers, morale and authority had a strong impact on the effectiveness of the Red Army, especially since it was undergoing a major expansion. Many officers were put in positions too early and not long enough. Additionally, the constant threat of being arrested reduced the initiative of many, since they were more concerned about not committing an error than earning a promotion especially since the leader didn't really decrease the chance of being purged. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. As always, sources are linked in the description. If you want to learn more about the Eastern Front, check out this video about German infantry anti-tank tactics or this video about the major blunders of the Wehrmacht during Operation Barbarossa. Thank you for watching and see you next time.